everyone, my name is Yvonne Villarreal and I cover TV here at the LA Times. And we're doing another installment in our Emmy Contender Chats and joining me today is a woman you don't want to mess with, <laughs> Miss Miranda Otto, who we saw in this season's uh, uh, Homeland who played Allison. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure, good morning. Um, tell me how this was sort of pitched to you coming into this season and who made the pitch and talk, talk to me about how it all went down. Well, I actually was, um, uh, you know, I've been a fan of the show and I, I was asked by Alex Ganza to come into a casting and I had a couple of scenes mm -hmm. and I sort of started to gather from the scenes a couple of plot lines and when I went into the um, test with him, I said, is there something going on between me and Saul? And he was like, yes, you're having an affair with Saul and you're a double agent. So uh -huh. I found those things out kind of in, in the audition. He, uh, he let me know. Um, and the, yeah, I just, I just auditioned that day and then it all happened really super fast, this mm -hmm. job. I, I just went in and then a day or two later they, they said they wanted to make a deal and mm -hmm. then a week later I was flying to Berlin. To Berlin it was yeah. incredibly fast. But it, it sounded from the beginning to be a really juicy part. Mm -hmm. Did you audition? Did you do the scene with Mandy? or No, yeah. no, I just read with, okay. uh, with the casting director. Uh -huh. And how was it sort of just being thrust into this, flying to Berlin? Like, how, how did you sort of get acquainted with everyone and get into the mix? I just had to do everything on the fly, really. And uh -huh. actually, my husband said to me, I mean, those guys are so great. You are really going to have to, like, step up and step in mm -hmm. really fast. You're going to have to be right on the money when you, when you go in because, I mean, they're well established in the season. They know their characters really well and they're magnificent actors. So... A lot of it was just, um, you know, I had a week when I was there kind of to get everything together mm -hmm. and so much research to do as well. Yeah. Let's talk about what went into all that research. Well, I particularly um, asked, I really enjoy the research side mm -hmm. of things and because these guys had been playing these parts and understood this world For so well, time, I felt yeah. like I needed to get on board as quickly as I could. So they sent me a lot of research and they actually sent me a book about um, Kim Philby, you know, Burgess Philby and McLean, but particularly mm -hmm. about Philby. And um, that was an inspiration for part of the story. Um, and, and then they put me in touch with a guy who was an advisor on their show, a guy called John McGaffin, mm -hmm. um, who used to be in the CIA. So he was fantastic. So he was my touchstone, really, during a lot of it. I would ring him and ask him about what would happen in certain situations and what he would do, and mm -hmm. he was incredibly helpful. Did you like knowing that, that you were playing someone that was going to be a double agent? Did it... I did. I think it's always great to have a secret, uh -huh. you know, something that other people don't know. And I like parts that have restrictions so that mm -hmm. I really enjoy playing against the restriction of, of not being able to reveal my full self was actually really mm -hmm. fun knowing that uh, I guess, you know, Allison is a person who likes to think that she's smarter than everybody else in the room. I mean, a person who yeah. takes on the role of being a double agent. Um, is, is definitely um, somebody who, you know, enjoys being one up on everyone else. You mm -hmm. have to kind of enjoy putting yourself in that position. Um, and I think I kind of enjoyed being that as well. But we were so sad for Saul. We were like, I know, I was so mean. mean. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. It seemed, it seemed mean, didn't it? I know. I, I got so many emails from my friends um, yeah. along the way going, my God, you're sleeping with Saul. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Like he's like a beetle for us. I know. We really I know. cherish Saul. I, I don't know. want to see him hurt. I know. What was it like wor working with Mandy so closely? Oh, he's he's brilliant. He's brilliant. He just it, the script in itself is so fantastic when it comes in, and it's so layered, and you can never tell where it's going next. And then when you have actors, you know, like Mandy and Claire, he he just brings such a depth mm -hmm. to everything that he does. He brings such you know, it's not, it, no, nothing in the show is, is black or white. Mm -hmm. he, he brings um, such a, a, a wisdom and um, gravitas to everything that he does. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a question from Twitter. Um, a fan asked, what was your favorite scene of your character in Homeland? Oh, by far and away, um, shooting Conrad in the head. <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounds your, lovely, yes. Um, I've never gotten to really do <laughs> kind of action-y things. And when that scene came up, it's sort of typical kind of male yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And uh -huh. to actually play, I mean, that was a part of this part that was so interesting that, you know, she, she didn't have children. Uh -huh. um, you know, she was a career woman. And it, it was almost, you know, there were definitely female parts of the character. But, it, you know, a lot of it could have been a man. Yeah. Um, so to, to get to play something that it, it was so fun mm -hmm. doing, doing all the kind of action and shooting. <laughs> did that require a lot of like practice? I did go in and practice. Yeah. I, I got in touch with the stunt guys and you know take me through the gun stuff because uh -huh. I haven't done a lot of shooting of guns and so take me through that and what would happen and I was interested in all the ballistics of the scene and how we could most make it realistic that, that I could get away with it because I thought it was such a, a great kind of um, sting that she put together. Like every mm -hmm. time it seemed like she was completely in a corner, uh, Alex would come up with these amazing solutions. He made her so bright. Mm -hmm. How about um, working with uh, Leslie as the director? What uh, was, what was, uh, she's awesome. She so is talk awesome. a little bit about working with her. Well, she actually directed four of the episodes. Mm -hmm. um, she's, She's magnificent. Mm -hmm. She's a, a wonderful person and she really, what's so nice on that show is they are so involved in, in the characters and the acting and she really takes time to read everything through and she doesn't let anything go until she's found every level that she needs in the performance. I think, I mean, yeah. she's so close with the show and she knows so much about it and it's, it's just wonderful to have her there all mm -hmm. the time. You know, she was with us pretty much the whole time in Berlin. So she kind of really, um, and she's got this brilliant energy. She's I mean, she was a dancer, brilliant. yeah, and she just has this yeah. life force about her that is so encouraging and, and well, yeah. and I like that she, I, I think the last time I spoke with her, because she was trying to get me to go to Berlin, LA Times, please pay for that. <laughs> um, but she was saying how um, she was, you know, she had this sort of, I don't know if it's like underground or whatever, but this program where she had female directors shadow her because she thinks, you know, we need to be bringing more of, of females into the ranks. And I just thought that was awesome. Yeah. I don't know if you saw much of that there. Uh, there were a, a yeah. number of women who, who actually shadowed her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she does that. And I think it is important. You know, I'm from Australia. And when I first started in the film business, uh, at a point when I'd done, I think, about 20 films, um, half of them had been directed by women. Mm -hmm. there was a re there's a very strong female um, right. directors and, and producers and everything mm -hmm. in Australia. And then when I first came to America, it was very rare yeah. to meet a female yeah. director. Yeah. So, so hats off to her. I think we have to be supportive of each other. And how was it shooting in Berlin? What was that experience like? It was great. Yeah. I'd, I'd been to Berlin uh, many years ago, and I loved it then. It was like 92 or something I was there. And I'd always wanted to go back. So I was super excited to see that we were mm -hmm. going to be in Berlin for six months. But it just, uh, it just adds so much to the story. It's such a character in mm -hmm. itself. In, in terms of espionage, it, it really is the, the heartland of that in terms of literature. That's what mm -hmm. you know, we always right. think of you know, Berlin, the divided city. And, and you know, it's still you know, very much at the, the heart of, of Europe in terms mm -hmm. of that. Was there much time to like uh, have downtime with the cast or hang out or is it like the lo days are so long shooting? Oh, we, the the funny thing is in this that we all had, except for perhaps Mandy and myself, but a lot of us were involved in really quite separate stories oh. at times. Like Claire's mm -hmm. story intersected with mine um, a couple of times mm -hmm. in, in the past. Um, I worked with Mandy quite a lot. I, I didn't work with Rupert at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and or with Rupert. I know, poor Rupert. <laughs> poor they Rupert. put him through yes. hell. Yes, they did. Oh. Yeah. But um, no, I got, I got lots of time mm -hmm. to, to hang out. Good. Yeah. Well, and what was it like? Because I mean, I don't think people uh, sort of see you as a villain from the characters you've played in the past. Like, what was that sort of like to play that up? I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. It's fun to be the, the bad guy. Mm -hmm. But the challenging part for me was that these these characters are so well established and we know how incredibly bright they are, mm -hmm. like eerily bright. Um, the idea that I was actually fooling them right. was the hardest thing for me to pull off in terms of also 
letting the audience see that there was tension so that I didn't make everything look completely mm -hmm. easy, but enough that you wouldn't think that they would cotton on. So right, right. I, I kind of call it colon twisting acting. There was a lot of <laughs> colon twisting acting where I'm trying to be really cool, but I had to maintain this kind of tension uh -huh. underneath of, of um, you know, trying to uh, work on my feet and work out how to get out of situations. Was it hard for you to get a grasp on Allison, like because you didn't have as much time to spend with her, or did you feel like you knew her? Did you, did Alex give you enough backstory of like who she really is? I know we see some of that, but how did you feel about? He gave me some of the backstory, but things were developing mm -hmm. along the way. So there were times. I mean, there was a time really early on. I think it was around episode four or five where I thought, well, that's it, my, my number's up. Like, yeah. they're about to find out that it was me. The yeah, audience yeah. now knows what I'm up to. I'm going to be in a jail cell or sent back to Langley uh -huh. really soon, and that'll be the end of my arc. And then they just kept finding different ways to kind of keep it going. And But um, it it is a really interesting process for an actor because, you know, I've mainly worked in film mm -hmm. and, and theater, and you really know where you're going. You know your yeah. beginning and your end. And this, it's so different when you don't know where you're going. And you know, in, honestly, sometimes for the, for the betterment, because mm -hmm. you, you can't sort of play moments before they actually come up, because mm -hmm. you, you don't know that they're going to happen. Well, and what was it like to see how audiences responded to your character? Because it was like, one, we don't want her to break Mandy's heart, but um, or Saul's heart, but at the same time, we like loved uh, Allison. Like she was a badass. And yeah. you know, talk about what the reception was in in your view. Well, it actually started uh, on air here while we were still in Berlin. We okay. actually finished the last episode, I think, three weeks before it was due on air. So it was really tight. And I did wow. come home. I came home at one stage, and and it was already been on air for some time. And I was in the supermarket, and a woman came up to me and went. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was like, yes. I was really happy. It's like, it's Job always, accomplished. Yeah, it's yeah. always better to make an impression than, uh -huh. than not to. So I, it, was, it was really fun to play somebody who, who wasn't a victim. Uh -huh. yeah. How about the uh, interrogation scene um, with Saul where um, he starts choking. Yeah, that was a good um, scene too. That's a good scene. <laughs> Talk about that. Yeah, just acting that out because we've never really seen him sort of get to that level of rage. I know um, she knew how yeah, to push his she buttons. She really did. Yeah. And how was that sort of acting out? It was intense. That yeah. was a really intense scene. Like Mandy, he just brings it. I wasn't, you know, frightened, frightened, but he, it's, it's very real. It's very, very real, and it, it was. It was it was amazing to see him like that because mm -hmm. he, he's usually, you know, very, you know, wise and considered, mm -hmm. and that's how mm -hmm. his character is. So it was fascinating mm -hmm. to to see him lose it in in that way. Did he like? How was he between takes, Mandy? Like, I'm, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, You're sorry. Not okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. How You're was okay? You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, but you know, it was one of those. Well, we shot it a lot too. We shot a lot, lot, of, a lot, a lot of different angles mm -hmm. and different takes and stuff because it was a really, it was a really tricky scene, and there was a, a lot of um, things that he had to say to me. And yeah, it was it was quite an intense scene to mm -hmm. shoot. Mm -hmm. Well, we got another question from Thomas. Thomas, I can't pronounce your last name. I'm sorry. That's hard for me. Um, do you remember your ring con experience? Yes, I do. In Germany. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. It was Germany, Rincon's Germany, isn't uh -huh. it? Yeah. I remember I came in and I was quite jet lagged for a lot of my experience, but I still have a lot of photos from there of all these people in the most incredible costumes. People must spend months making these costumes. Really? There were people dressed up as ants, like a whole sort of trees and it was, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a lot of fun. They wanted me to do some sword fighting, but I, I wasn't up to speed. And so I <laughs> negated that one. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. So what 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 had what was the experience looking back on the homeland shooting that the fifth season? What was that like for you? What did you? Well, it's interesting. They sent um, I think Babelsberg Studio put together a book of photographs uh, from the whole experience um, of all of the crew and things behind the scenes, and then blueprints of some of the the, the um, designs for things mm -hmm. and. 
I didn't know where to come from and I grabbed this mail thing and I was uh, in my car and I, was, and I got out and I opened it up and I it just absolutely took my breath away. I, I started to cry sitting there because it was You don't such, realize the magnitude until yeah, it's over. Yeah, it was such yeah. a rich, incredible experience and just seeing everybody's faces again and thinking, wow, to have been part of that. It, mm -hmm. was, it was really overwhelming. At the time when you're doing it, you're just trying to make everything work and trying to, you know, you're kind of on the train of it, but to yeah. reflect on it is, mm -hmm. is something different again. Was there a scene you thought you wouldn't be able to get through or? Wouldn't be able to get through. Um, no, nothing that I, I, I remember thinking that this scene in the bathroom when mm. it was coming up, that people said to me, oh, you've got that scene in the yeah, bathroom. Yeah. Oh, that scene in the bathroom. It's like, and everyone was talking about it a lot. It's like, oh my God, I better do something <laughs> with this scene in the bathroom. Um, and I started, I went online and started looking at um, people having panic attacks mm -hmm. and, and all that. It was fascinating yeah. what you can find online. Seriously, people yeah. taping themselves having panic mm -hmm. attacks, like giving you a blow-by-blow blow of yeah. what's actually happening to them in the moment. Um, so that, that, was, that was one that I think it just got talked up a lot mm. beforehand. Oh, that and this, the scene in the car, the scene when you really, I think, um, I think it's when you first find out. Is it when she first find out that she's when she when she meets um, the handler for the oh, first okay, time right, right, in the right. car? Mm. That that was a big scene as well. Mm. I like that scene a lot. Do you like the more quieter ones, or like the ones where you get to do some action? Just doing the action thing, the, the Conrad thing was was it was just fun because I've just never gotten to do. <laughs> you anything. light up when talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> <I do. laughs> The next time you got to do something like that. Um, we got another question from Michael Swank who says, love seeing strong roles for women on TV. Do you think there is room for improvement of your character to be a catalyst for more roles? Improvement of my character? I, I, look, I definitely think that, that people like seeing strong women. Men like seeing strong women and women like seeing strong women. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, particularly in, in my age category, we're kind of less interested in, in women who are victims. By this stage, you've really got to get yes. your act together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, characters like that are provocative and interesting in, mm -hmm. and dynamic. Mm -hmm. And what else do you have coming up? Um, I just finished a pilot for 24, so okay. I'm still in the world of intelligence. I yes. was, I was <laughs> lured in. <laughs> I didn't want to leave. Um, yeah, so we just finished shooting that on Monday, and then we'll find out in May whether it's going ahead. So okay. fingers crossed. Nice. Yeah. Do you think you could ever just make the transition, make the leap over full time on CA? <laughs> if they'd ask me, enough? you can Well, no, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> I keep it would learning. be fascinating, right? Oh, it's so fascinating. It's that I don't was know one of the biggest thrills that. for me. I mean, there were so many thrills for me on this job working in Berlin. Um, working with Alex, working with all those actors, but but also just having an insight um, into that world yeah. and how things actually work. It was I feel like there's no downtime. Like, does Allison get to watch any TV or like no. what does she get to no, do? I don't think so. Nothing? I mean, she probably has some kind of strange guilty pleasure. What I do think, you think you her know? guilty pleasure is? I don't know. Um, you know, it's probably something really Bachelor, strange and mundane. Real yeah, Housewives, probably, something yeah. like that. Maybe we'll Real Housewives of Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Miranda, thanks so much for joining us. It was pleasure. a pleasure talking to you. Everyone out there, thanks for joining us. Uh, keep tuning in to our Emmy Chats. Thanks.